Okay. Mighty companions, how y'all doing? Hello. Yeah. Well, well it, it's, it, we had one of those great Colorado sunshiny yeah. days today, obviously, yes. and we're out enjoying it. But welcome to the Course in Miracles. I want to welcome those that are watching live around the world on Facebook Live. I'm Earl Purdy, and we're going to do the Course in Miracles. And today, we're going to be talking about, a, uh, I think, something that's guaranteed to make uh, a, a lot of people feel a little queasy. When I uh, saw the section that I was instructed inwardly to do today, I went, okay, all right, this is going to be this is going to be one of those sections that 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 touches the ch a lot of the charges that some of us got in childhood. And this is uh, the section is on page four o two in the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. And the name of this particular section is called Sin Versus Error. Sin Versus Error. This is a hardcore class today. And uh, one of the things that the Course in Miracles continually says is read me slowly. Do me slowly. And another thing that's awesome about the Course is that what tends to happen in the Course in Miracles is that the the message can, can very easily get lost. It can very easily, a person can very easily distract themselves to not hear the message because the Course in Miracles can bring up an, an unusual level of resistance. So what we want to do is, first of all, really tune into what the guidelines for the Course in Miracles is. And the guidelines for the Course in Miracles are First and foremost, it says you need not believe the ideas. How many of you all are pretty good at not believing some of the ideas? <laughs> okay, if you've been studying the Course in Miracles. It says you need not accept the ideas. You need not welcome the ideas, accept the ideas. Some of the ideas are going to be hard to believe. And I'm going to emphasize that again. Some of these ideas are going to be hard to believe. And then it says some of the ideas may be quite startling. But it also says you're not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all, even though that's, you know, one of our favorite pastimes. But it is letting us know that it says if you use it, you'll see that it's true. And I've been a student and a facilitator of the Course in Miracles for almost 40 years. And um, the, the Course in Miracles teaches that the purpose of a relationship is to save you time, to allow you to get past the blocks quicker. But we have a tendency to use our relationships for just the opposite. Sometimes we use our relationships to delay ourselves and to keep some form of conflict going. And it's supposed to be used to save us some time. Uh, the Course in Miracles calls a, a holy relationship a sane relationship. I love the Course in Miracles definitions of the words. So a holy relationship is just simply a loving, sane relationship. That's it. So if, if, you, if you're in a relationship and you're not acting crazy, then you, you head it toward the holy relationship. <laughs> okay? You know. All right? <laughs> I've heard it's a rumor that, you know, you can have one. So those of you online, don't forget to, to that. The, the beauty of being online is that you can comment and, uh, and ask questions and communicate with each other. So, and so I'm going to go through the paragraph. And then we're going to see what the main point is that it's trying to get across to us. And then I don't, the course says there's no such thing as chance or accident. So I believe that everybody that comes to my classes are people that are sent that particular day. Like people ask me about my classes. The only thing that's consistent about my class is it's inconsistent. That's the consistency of I never know who's going to be here. Okay? You can be packed one day and 10 people the next week and two and then 50 the next. It's because... It has nothing to do with my undeniable charisma. <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with the fact that people are being sent. And some people are being sent one week and another group are being sent the next week. So sin is an idea that I grew up with and I heard a lot. I grew up, uh, anybody here grew up in a fundamentalist conservative religion and anybody? Nobody did? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the Course in Miracles says that one of the main causes of pain is the fact that we've been programmed to believe we're guilty and sinful sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
that that's really because what we experience in our reality is a reflection of our belief system. So everything we're seeing on the outer, how we interpret it, the meaning we give to it is coming from what we've learned. You calling me a man, why? Because you learned to. We, I'm calling you, know, you call these pants because you learned to. So people don't realize, they're only, we're only seeing the beliefs and the meanings that we've been given. Okay? So the Course in Miracles says we have conscious beliefs and we have unconscious beliefs. So most people are not actually aware of their beliefs. That we have much more unconscious, subconscious beliefs and programmings than we are aware of. And that the physical world is a reflection of your unconscious beliefs, your subconscious beliefs. So your physical environment and the personal life you created for yourself is a reflection of your belief system, conscious and unconscious. If you have a belief in sin, or, or, or another word could be guilt, okay? Irreversible guilt. Just in case you didn't get all oh, the belief in sin, we've all heard about guilt, okay? So the Course in Miracles says all pain is coming from unconscious guilt, whether we know it or not. But so what makes the Course in Miracles a challenge to teach is that the Course in Miracles does shadow work. Shadow work is getting people in touch with beliefs that they have that they don't know they have. So if you're sharing with people beliefs that they don't recognize, then it's not unusual for some resistance to come up. Because you'll say, well, I don't believe that. But if you're getting the result, then some part of you must believe it, or you wouldn't be getting the physical result. So, the, so when it talks about sin versus error, there's a very core belief that it's going to be teaching us right now. So... It says it's essential on page 402, chapter uh, 19, page 402, um, in the Course in Miracles, section 2, sin versus error. It says it's essential that error be not confused with sin, and it is this distinction that makes salvation, which is right-mindedness, possible. I'll give you the Course in Miracles definitions for a lot of the Christian terminology. And one of the definitions of salvation in the Course in Miracles is forgiveness and right-mindedness. And so it says... Uh, it's essential that we don't confuse making a mistake with believing in sin. That making a mistake and believing in sin or guilt is not the same thing. Making a mistake and believing that you're guilty is not the same thing. So it says it is this distinction that makes your healing possible. So what is the distinction that makes your healing possible? Understanding that making a mistake is not the same as you committed a sin. And the Course says, for error can be corrected and the wrong made right. If it's a mistake, it can be corrected. The sin is the idea that you can do something that's irreversible. Like when you hear stuff like, you were born in sin. That is just your nature. You cannot help that. That's totally, completely saying that there could be something about you that's beyond love's ability to heal and beyond God's ability to heal. Some people feel so guilty or want to feel so guilty that they want to believe that their very nature is sinful and guilty. And so the Course is saying that is one of the biggest mistakes that we make is to give ourselves this core belief that we are guilty and that we're sinful. That's not the same as saying we don't make mistakes. We make mistakes, but you're not sinful and you're not irreversibly guilty. And so the Course says to us then that the belief he says, but seeing where possible would be irreversible. If it's just my nature, there's nothing I can do about it. So as soon as you say, I'm just a guilty, bad person, or I'm just a sinful person, then when you do that, you're saying, this is the way I am, and there's nothing I can do about it. And if you do that to yourself, that's not really nice. Okay. You're not that special. Okay. You're not so special that you can do something that's absolutely irreversible. Are uncorrect. That's a little bit too special. So, uh -huh. so the Course in Miracles says the belief in sin is necessarily based on the firm conviction that minds and not bodies can attack. And thus the mind is guilty and will forever so remain guilty unless a mind not part of it can give it absolution. So what did that just say? If you think your mind is guilty, if you think you're sinful, and if you think you're going to forever be that way, then you need somebody else outside of you to absolve you of your guilt. Mm -hmm. So that kind of explains why some people have to go and do what they call doing confessions. 
You know, we believe that it's going to take something or somebody outside of ourselves to absolve us from guilt or to resolve us from fear. That's another mistake because everything that I'm feeling is coming from me. Everything I think about myself is coming from me. I'm giving everything all the meaning that it has for me. So I don't need anybody outside of me to absolve me of my guilt. I don't need you to say I'm okay before I'll be okay. You don't need somebody else to validate you before you can be seen as loving and innocent. So the minute you set yourself up where you need the approval of others in, other, in order to be okay, you just jam yourself up. Because the part of you, the part of a person that doesn't love them is going to seek for that validation usually from the very people or persons that doesn't want to give it to them. So if I want to feel guilty and I believe that I'm not enough and, there's, and I've been taught that I don't have the kind of value that I have, then my ego is going to seek out people who validate that to me by the way that they treat me. So I can tell how I feel about myself by the kind of people that I allow myself to be around and focus on and spend my time with. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, it's not a big mystery what you think about yourself. How you think about yourself is absolutely revealed in what you focus your, most of your attention on. Okay, so the Course in Miracles is saying to us, the idea of sin calls for punishment as error for correction, and the belief that punishment is correction is clearly insane. The belief that punishing you is correcting you is insane. Belief that punishing yourself is somehow going to heal you or absolve you is, according to the Course in Miracles, a completely insane idea. If I think two and two is seven mm. and you beat the hell out of me, I'm still going to think two and two is seven. <laughs> so just because you, I receive punishment doesn't mean I'm going to be corrected. And that's what a lot of what happens in the prison system mm -hmm. because there's no rehabilitation, there is no love, there is no working with people at the causative level, what made me do that, mm -hmm. what made me want to hurt, rob, kill, whatever I did. Mm -hmm. If you don't work on the cause level, I am not going to change. So just because you locked me up, beat me up, Possibly I've created a, an experience, a situation where I'm being abused in some way. I'm not going to walk out of prison ready to be a kind person if you're not giving me any kind of love, any kind of support, any kind of healing. Punishment doesn't correct anything. It's another way of looking at it that corrects things. So that's the first paragraph in the Course of Miracles. Starts out real light, right? It just, the Course of Miracles is a really light teaching. It's just, you know. So, so, so basically, the Course of Miracles is telling us, stop looking for somebody else to absolve you. You're innocent. You just need to get rid of the mistaken thoughts that you have about yourself. Punishing yourself, and you thinking that's going to correct the situation, the Course of Miracles says, that's insane. So how... Do you think punishment came from God? Hmm, oh, just a second. I'm going I'm to open it up for questions. Just a minute. I have one more point I want to finish making. Um, the, the, the main thing that, that... What is the main point of the paragraph? The main point of the paragraph is that sin is something that is not true. Mm -hmm. That you cannot do anything that God or love could not correct. You do make mistakes. Mistakes are for correction, not punishment. Mm -hmm. So it's essential that error not be confused with sin. So I made a mistake doesn't make me bad. I made a mistake doesn't make me unlovable. I made a mistake doesn't mean I don't deserve the same level of love and support as everyone else does. Mm. I grew up in a religion when I was a kid that taught me I was born in sin. So I was immediately given the idea that I was inherently flawed just by being born. And what about it? That's really possible. <laughs> just because you were born, everything is messed up for you. <laughs> I want you to think about that. And think about, it, it sounds funny to say it, but that is a very prevalent belief in our culture. 
that every time somebody does something wrong, they don't deserve healing, they don't deserve help, they just deserve punishment. Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize, according to the Course, is that people give what they want to receive. So the person that most wants everybody to be punished is the person that what? Most believes that they make a mistake, yeah, they deserve to be punished. What you want for other people is actually, according to the Course, what you want for yourself. Okay, now, uh, any questions or comments focused on the what we're talking about right now for a clearer understanding of it? You, you, had, you say something first, and now... Uh, it, it, sometimes I think that God punishes us to send us on a correct, a correct path. According to the Course in Miracles, God never punishes us. Love never punishes us. That, and remember now, and this is, I'm glad you said that, what I'm sharing yes. is what? A course in yeah. miracles. God is love. Okay, so when so in a course in miracles class, I'm sharing the thought system of the course, which may or may not correspond with your belief system. Mm -hmm. So that's just important. So when I answer that, it's just according to the course, love never punishes. Mm -hmm. Love never attacks. Love always heals. It teaches that we don't know the difference between love and fear. We don't know that we don't know the course experience is we don't really know what love really is. What we experience all the time is conditional, special, bargaining love. I love you if you do this. I won't love you if you don't do this. I got a lot of rules and scripts for what you should do to deserve my love. And the course of miracles is saying that ain't love. <laughs> that, so the first thing we need to do is get love always heals. And there's no exception to that. And then, so the man will come up with, what about Hitler? What about the people in Africa? I know all the whatabouts, okay? I've done this for 40 years. I know all the whatabouts, okay? <laughs> Which are just a way of defending against having a more loving, forgiving perception. When you come up with every reason why something is telling you that you deserve love and healing and help, and you're fighting that, what is that saying? <laughs> you know, it's like why? It's like even if I didn't know how to do that, why wouldn't I side with the idea that if I made a mistake, yeah. I could be helped and healed? Why would I want to defend the idea that <laughs> punishment and attack is the way to go? Unless what? Their belief system. Their belief system, and I, and yeah. that's what I believe I deserve. Yeah. That's why classes. That, the Course in Miracles says, um, if you sit in front of a group, basically. And you tell them that they're sinless and they're guiltless and they deserve to be loved no matter what. That the part of the mind reacts as if you were the devil in the cloak of an angel trying to <laughs> deceive people. So sometimes when I talk from the course, people can feel an uneasiness that they don't quite understand why. And that's because they're, that old core belief in them not being good enough and deserving love, I'm, 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 I'm challenging that idea. Yeah. So if I think if I'm bad you punish me, then I'm okay. And, you, and then I come to a teaching that's telling me I don't deserve to be punished. Then to the guilty part of my mind, I'm not being given a way to be absolved from my mm -hmm. guilt because I've already decided punishing me yeah. is how I'm going to be okay. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. So by the mere fact that I'm saying you are loved, you don't deserve to be punished. Nobody deserves to be punished. They deserve to be helped and corrected. Now, in an unloving, vindictive, condemning society, this is not gonna this is not gonna fly. <laughs> so don't get me wrong. I don't expect the course of miracles literally says, you know, it is only for those who are partially sane. <laughs> It says it, it, it is absolutely an inconceivable teaching for someone that's totally insane. Because he says a totally insane person doesn't listen to reason, and they just believe that whatever they believe is the way that it is, and even if they don't love themselves, they still believe they deserve to be punished. So how, do you, how can you punish? What are some of the ways you can punish yourself? Could you punish yourself through financial lack? Oh, absolutely. Could you punish yourself through physical ailments yes. and pain. Yes. Could you punish yourself through go getting up every day going to a job that yeah. you hate? Yeah. Can you, uh, it, could, could you be punishing yourself by condemning your body? Yes. You follow what I'm saying? So when I say punishment, I don't necessarily mean someone smacking you upside the head. I'm saying that you're living a life that's unfulfilling for you and you're feeling sad and depressed most of the time. 
then that's a form of punishment of yourself. And so, therefore, when someone tells you it could be another way, then everything in you that doesn't believe you deserve anything other than punishment is going to resist the person that tells you that. But you know what's so cool about that? If I tell you I want to love you and you only deserve love and you make mistakes and I make mistakes and you get away from me, thank you. <laughs> right? right? Right, because you're going to be a drama king, you're a queen, you're going to be a problem. You're going to be, you're going to be a real problem for me because you don't believe you deserve love, so you're going to sabotage our relationship and you're going to judge me or judge me, uh, attack me. Uh, you, you're going to try to do something to give yourself the punishment that you want. So what makes this such a beautiful fail-safe system is if you are truly loving, those who are not ready to receive love will not be attracted to you unless you seek them out. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, Chris. Uh, add a hand over on this side. So one of the things that I've been doing is really attempting to use the course. Mm-hmm. To look at it from an objective perspective, specific to a structure. Okay, so in this micro community, mm -hmm. it's whether we want to accept it at a conscious level or not. It's very clear to me. We've all been indoctrinated, and we have an embedded theology within our unconscious that from the original sin doctrine. I mean, unless you were born in an enclave. That was protected from all. Yeah. This. Even if even if even if you could say I wasn't informally indoctrinated, yeah. if you in this yeah. system, if you in American culture, exactly, exactly. you're in. And, yeah. you're in. and, and, and you're so, in. Yeah. And, then it, and in that, mm -hmm. we also are in a system that is based on retribution, punishment. Mm -hmm. So even as I sit in micro community today mm -hmm. and in my other days of selective community, the minute I step out of that field, even though consciousness is carried with me. I'm constantly coming in contact with a system and other players, insane players out there, and yet where I'm sitting here now, Earl, is saying to myself, so what is it? Is it that we just have to continue in these micro-communities so that those that are having children and birthing them into this consciousness that the next generation and the generation after that are going to be our liberators? Because the truth is, unless we're immersed in this 24-7, we're subject to the structure. And what the Course is telling us is that our, our responsibility is to accept the truth mm -hmm. that I'm sharing right now for ourselves mm -hmm. right now. Because if I accept that my mistakes are for correction and I'm not guilty and I don't deserve punishment, then I'm going to become a more loving person. If I become a more loving person, I'm going to have a direct effect on those in my life around yes. me. And that's all you can do. That's all, yeah. that's all any of us can do. Yeah. Is change our mind, change the way that we express ourselves. And, then, and here's the big thing. This is going to be a really interesting statement I'm about to say. Is uh, Course has the radical idea that we have a creator. It's called God. And that we can be healed. There's an intelligence greater than ours that is with us, that is supporting us, that created us, that we've lost the ability to communicate with. So it isn't about you and I healing anything. It's about us getting out of the way to let God heal through us. See, this is a spiritual teaching. This is, this is not another teaching about how to give you information so you can handle everything on your own better. This is not what my class is about. I'm, I'm sick of classes where it's all about people thinking that it's all up to them by themselves to correct everything and to fix everything and, no, and don't believe in a higher power in their life. I very much want to believe in a higher power in my life. It, what makes the Course in Miracles different is that it completely eradicates the idea of sin and guilt and punishment and condemnation and tells us that we are beyond our bodies and we are spiritual beings having a human experience and we're here to learn how to remove all the blocks to love and to recognize who we really are. That's what the Course is basic premise is, is that we don't know how to tell the difference between love and fear, so we choose things that give us a lot of pain. So when you get overwhelmed in thinking about how can I, the system seems to be bigger than anything, that's, that can be used as a way to keep you from applying the truth to your own personal life and your own situation right now. If you think about it, I could go, well, there's no way a person like me could make that big of a difference in the world, so I just, I'm just caught up in, no, no, that's not true. I am responsible 
for what I see. I'm responsible for whether I see love or peace in my life, whether I'm going to extend love or extend fear. Then it says, I choose the feelings I experience. What does that mean? If I'm giving the meaning to everything I see and my emotional reactions are coming from the meaning, then I could change my feeling by changing the meanings I'm giving things. <clears throat> Let me give you a real, real quick, simple example. I step on your foot, you think I did it on purpose, and you get angry instantly. Right? And I say to you, I'm sorry, that was an accident, I didn't mean to step on your foot. And you accept that, you immediately let go of your anger. You don't have to go to therapy to do it. <laughs> it doesn't take three weeks for you to do it. As soon as you give yourself a different interpretation, which is the person saying, that was really an accident, I didn't mean to do it, your anger, if you're a halfway conscious same being, you drop it. Right? And that happened instantly. That didn't happen over a long period of time. As soon as you change the meaning, your emotions shifted. And that, my friends, is the answer to how you change all of your feelings. It's all of your feelings are coming from the meanings that you're giving to the situations in your life. And as since as you giving it the meaning, then you theoretically could have peace all day, every day, regardless of what anybody else was doing, because you're the one that's in control of your feelings by the meanings and interpretations that you give to everything around you. And when you say, I just couldn't help but respond in a certain way, that's just an emotionally charged meaning that you've given to yourself so many times and it's so ingrained in you that it's an automatic response to temptation. Uh, the, 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 here's a perfect analog analogy when you're trying to change your belief system to change your life. How many of you have ever washed dishes? <laughs> Some of y'all need, how many of y'all need to wash dishes now? Okay, 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 all right, so that's, okay, that's not a sin. That's <laughs> a I know, that's a really test. Now, dishwashing, that's a whole, that's a whole nother level right there. That's, I know, there's some things that's beyond God, okay. So, all right, so, so some of the stuff on the plate, immediately you're soaping it up, and it goes, and it's clean, and then you have those stubborn spots, right? So what do you do with the stubborn spot normally? You just scrub more and you scrub longer. You don't go get a different kind of detergent usually. You just scrub, scrub longer. So, so, your, deepest, so your deepest core beliefs are going to take more time for you to allow to be changed than those superficial beliefs. So if you got a core belief that you're guilty or you're bad or you're unloved or you're a sinner or you're separate from God or you have all your life you had financial problems, that's like, the, that's like that stain on the plate that's just that's, that's, that's been there so long. It's going to take some more scrubbing. And, and so you're going you're gonna to have to really realize that those areas that you got the deepest beliefs in, you can't expect those areas to change overnight. I'm sorry. Enlightenment is not like going to McDonald's. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm saying, I mean, I've been doing this almost 40 years, so I've had a chance to watch yeah. the whole thing change. You know the biggest difference now when I first started teaching and now? See, 30 years ago, people didn't expect it to change overnight. Mm. They expected to have to invest some time yeah. in meditation, invest yeah. some time in study, really being consistent. But see, now everything is instant. Mm -hmm. So people think that they're going to just halfway do a class, kind of drop in, kind of read, kind of, you know, and all of a sudden everything is going to shift without me actually <laughs> consistently. That I'm, and it could, the Course in Miracles says you could, you could have it happen in the instant. How do you put it? You could have it happen in the instant, yeah. but it entails a willingness to surrender to something greater than your own ego that you haven't developed yet. Because an adult is taught to be autonomous and self-sufficient and that you really got your act together if you don't need to depend on anybody else but yourself. And adults have a tendency to not want to receive answers that they didn't think of, even if the answer would help them. If they didn't think of it, then they, then they have a tendency to just be resistant, <laughs> even if it would help, because they didn't think of it. Because we're taught we should come up with our own solutions. So the problem is, um, the Course in Miracles says, the problem is basically there are two types of people who are not really in a state of love and peace. And, and basically those are people that are uh, atheists or martyrs. And then he says that an atheist is not necessarily a person that says they do not believe in God. That's, that's not what an atheist is, according to the Course. According to the Course, an atheist is someone who thinks they are alone and on their own. So an atheist is someone who thinks that it's just them against the universe, and they've got to handle it all. 
He says, and the course says, that's what an atheist is. Someone that does not believe they're connected. That there's something greater than them and there's a oneness that they're connected to. And then he says, a martyr <laughs> is a person who believes that God demands sacrifice. Or love demands sacrifice. So I'm going to suffer for the good of everybody. Right? I'm going to put myself last before everybody. Right? So I discovered when I first heard that I was an atheist martyr. <laughs> that there's a part of me that thought I was on, on my own and alone and there was a part of me that, th that thought if I love you I got to sacrifice for you because everybody that's ever told me that they love me the first thing they did was told me all the things I needed to stop doing in order to make them happy and all the things I needed to do to, to make them happy and then it all then it became I was a good loving person in direct proportion to how much I sacrificed my happiness and did what you thought I needed to do in order to make you happy, and now I'm a loving person. And who, which kind of explains why people don't, they're not that big a hair to jump into relationships if they begin to wake up. Because just because I'm in a relationship with you doesn't mean that I should give up the things that give me joy. Yeah. That's not love. That's not love. That's not love. That's, that's sacrifice. So, so the Course is saying there's another level of love that we could be experiencing that's beyond anything that we could ever imagine. All it takes is for us to be willing to give ourselves new interpretations. And today's uh, class is saying the first one I want you to walk away with today is don't condemn yourself for making a mistake as if you're the first one that's ever made a mistake and that you can make a mistake that couldn't possibly be healed or corrected in your mind. The next thing the Course is stop punishing yourself. Stop thinking that the way that you have to absolve yourself is to punish yourself through lack and fear and relationships that don't work and health issues and you know that that's not gonna that's not necessary. That's good news. That's good news. Okay, uh, Chris. So I'm really glad you're talking about mm -hmm. this because, um, like, I grew up in a traditional Christian family and just, or I grew up in a traditional Christian belief and just. The condition in the belief is so ingrained that, like, you know, like there's something bad in me and everything that I do need that solution in order to, like, get rid of it because it's like something that I can't bear. And so I need someone like Jesus or, or a priest or a minister to take it away from me so, be, so that, you know, I can, because I can't bear it and I need someone to take it away from me. And it's just like, it's so conditioned, and it's been so ingrained that it's like I do that automatically, like like I'm on like co-pilot without even having to think about it. And so you know, just hearing you right now is helping me like make that connection. That wow, like just that belief is so ingrained. Like it's it's helping me like detach from it and look at it like oh okay, I see that that belief is so ingrained. But then even yeah, I, I feel like yeah, I need it taken away because. I can't take it away myself because I'm unworthy. Okay, I'm the, okay, okay. And, and so how do I let go of these false beliefs that I have that have limit, limited me for so long? I need some new ones. How, oh, yeah. was it, how was it that I got to the point that I believe what I believe now? Because I heard it over and over and yeah. over and over and over and right. over and over and over and over and over and over. Okay, so now I want to accept another truth about myself. Over over. How am I going to do that? By hearing the new truth over and over and over. Oh, you mean I can't just... Tune in every now and then. I, I can't just no. read or study my spiritual path every now and then. You mean I have to actually put some attention and study into you telling myself something new over and over again? But yeah. here's the advantage of the truth. The truth is so powerful that it works faster. Mm -hmm. Since you're giving yourself the truth, you have the support of the universe. You have the support of God. You have mm -hmm. the support of spirit. So when you start trying to focus on your innocence and that you deserve to be lovingly corrected, the universe rushes into your support because that's the truth. So you're not doing that on your own. At that point, you have all kinds of invisible, invisible support mm -hmm. because you've decided to love yourself. But you have to make yourself miserable on your own. <laughs> <laughs> or join with some other people who want to be miserable and then y'all just join in the suffering together. Oh. We call that culture and society. <laughs> okay? You know, so I'm telling you that you don't deserve to suffer. Yay. I'm telling you, you deserve love and that yes. you're not alone. So the Course of Miracles says, even if you don't know how to do that, you should side with that idea. 
Yeah. And, I was, and when I read that in the book, I went, you know, yes, that's right. Even if, if I told you that you deserve to have unlimited abundance and you don't know how to do it, you still should be going, that's a good that's idea. A good idea. <laughs> but you have people like not even on the side with the idea. You know, okay, well, you know, this is a trick question telling me I could be happy. What, what, what you trying to do, dude? What you know, this is a cult. And it, it, any place that tell me I deserve love is a cult. Isn't that sad? Anybody that would tell me I deserve love, I'm suspicious of them. Someone tells me I'm born in sin and guilty and deserve condemnation, I tie. <laughs> and I go religiously every week. And I dress up really pretty to be condemned. <laughs> and, and, and I believe the minister. Why do I believe the minister rather than believe what Earl is saying? Because the minister is witnessing back to me what I believe about myself. And since he's telling me I'm worth this and I'm bad and I'm guilty and I'm sinful and I already believe that about myself, it's going to sound like he's the honest teacher and Earl is the fake. Because Earl is the one that's telling you what you don't believe about yourself. That's deep. That's deep. So try not to complicate this unnecessarily. The Course in Miracles says... Complexity is a smoke screen of your ego to hide the simplicity of the truth. Yeah. So I just to the question on the environment, as somebody that has younger daughters, the thing that I see in this process is the amount of village, due diligence or the amount of volume needed to counter just the flow that we see in our culture, the speed at which information is relayed is amazing and so you know 30 years ago i wasn't bombarded with social media or bombarded with the internet at the same speed that you know like my daughters are and so having gone through something recently this weekend it's amazing it's like by the time you're seven eight or nine you have so many messages mm -hmm. you're not enough you're not okay mm -hmm. you don't look right whatever those messages and they come at you 24-7. So that's something I'm grappling with, is how do I... First, you can't transit, you can't, you know, hand off what you don't have. So being healthy myself is step one. But then how do you start to counter that flow of information? It's the exact same thing. All you can do is apply the truth as best mm -hmm. you can in the now moment. And mm -hmm. as much as you can affect that with your daughter, you do it. Mm -hmm. If, or that's if, you know as much as you can, then because you see the internet is you know I have thousands of people that watch my videos. I've had over a million views, so that's the internet being used for awakening, for truth, mm -hmm. for love. You know, so the internet is neutral. Social media is neutral. It's just what you want to use it for, and mm -hmm. and don't forget. Okay, let me add this. You you are souls who come here to evolve at a spiritual level. This is not. This is school. This isn't home. And some of y'all know this. Some of y'all some of y'all don't. It'll sound like I'm saying something really weird, but that's good. I'm here to talk weird. Um, but if you would look deep into your soul just for a minute and just let go of all the programming that fearful, frightened minds have given you since you've been born, you will realize that there's a part of you that knows this is not your home. Mm-hmm. That you that the part of you goes, this ain't right. Something's wrong here. We shouldn't be experiencing what we're experiencing right now. This is earth school. And when people do the transition called death, that's just that's the same as you just going home after you've been off to college for a while. Now that makes more sense to me than other definitions of our origins that I've heard. You know what I'm saying? So 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 even if nothing I'm saying to you today is true. If you believe that you still have a better life, if you, you know what I'm saying, if you, if yeah. nothing I was saying was true, but you walked out of here today and you go, oh, okay, I deserve to have a loving correction, and people deserve to have help, and I'm going to be a positive play, a person on the planet, and I'm going to see you all as one with me, and I'm going to see us as eternal beings. If that's the biggest crock of stuff that I could have ever said mm -hmm. to you, tell me how that's going to make my life work. Worse if I, if I live from that belief system. It, you know it doesn't. Everything else is just an excuse not to do it. Because in the end, in the end, you're the one that's going to have to make the decision for your happiness, right? And then we, but here's the thing, I'll say it again. When you do that, the universe rushes to your assistance 
curriculum show up in your life that will tell you the new way to interpret things, give you lessons, exercises to help you change your mind. Like the Course in Miracles has 365 lessons, a different lesson for every day of the year that you can apply to do two things. It says the first part of the workbook undoes the way you've been taught to see things. And the second part of the workbook is helping you with the acquisition of the new way of seeing things. That ain't going to happen if you don't do it, right? I mean, am I saying something crazy? No. no, no. So I'm telling you, don't. The minute you make that symbolic gesture by disciplining yourself enough to do it, which means you are sincere about the change, you and you do it with any level of consistency, you will start to see miracles in your life. But it cannot be that every now and then, only when I'm in crisis and I've gone over the cliff, do I reach out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never call on a higher power all year long. My car goes out of control, and I go over the cliff, and I go, Help me, God! You know, it's like, wait a minute now. You haven't given that, you haven't, it's like a muscle that you've given no exercise to for years. But now I'm in crisis, and I need an immediate help, right? Now, this is the trip, y'all. Spirit still helps you. The only difference is generally you won't recognize it because you haven't trained your mind to look at things differently. So even if I'm right in front of you or the help is right there, it's a good possibility you will not even see the answer to your prayer that you requested because you're still looking through your old eyes. And that's why you work on the practical application so that when love does show up, you can recognize it. Now I, now I know what a loving person would say to me. Now I know what a loving person would do. So I can listen to anybody in this room, and for me, I would know within 15 minutes whether I want to pursue any kind of an intimate connection with you, right? Because I know the difference between love and fear. But if I didn't know, then I'd do like I used to do. I'd just jump in it and hope it was going to turn out right because, <laughs> because they were, because, they're, because, they're, because they're cute. Everybody knows if it look good, it is good. Right? right? That's, a, that's, a, that, that's our culture. If it looks good, so I could be a serial killer, but if I look like Brad Pitt, you invite me home. <laughs> you see, and so we, the Course in Miracles is teaching, we don't really know what's truly valuable. We think the form and the outer is what's valuable rather than the content. So I'm, I'm, I want to go to another paragraph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This just reminded me, I yeah. had an epiphany the other day at the dentist of how much my life is actually a self-created fantasy. Because yes. I had all this anxiety, I had all this stuff coming up about, oh, I'm going to the dentist, and I hate the dentist, and all this stuff. And then I stopped and got centered and kind of said, what's the reality? Mm -hmm. The reality was it wasn't painful, they knew what they were doing, I was in and out, it was relaxing, but I had created anxiety and mm -hmm. just frustration and all this other pain in my life. And then I started, I took that same kind of epiphany and directed it to the rest of my life and was like, oh wow. Mm -hmm. All of my life is a self-created fantasy because if I actually look at the actual reality of what my experience is, it's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. I am loved, I'm cared for, and well, see, you see, you're separate you're separating the fact what I call separating the facts from the story. Right. Most people, are, whenever they're unhappy, it's always because of a story they're telling themselves. It has nothing to do with the actual fact. Let me give you another example, because the truth is always obvious. Oh, here we go. <laughs> all right? You all are sitting in this room right now. There's nobody attacking you. Mm -hmm. I say it again. You're sitting in this room. It's not like Syria. Let me tell you, they may be having a different day. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're sitting in a room. It's a beautiful day. No one's attacking you. You're surrounded by other people that want to wake up. So... Anything else you're telling yourself about this moment is your story. And it's your story that's keeping you from enjoying being here with all of us right now. It's you, you're not present. You, you're sitting here thinking about something that happened to you in the past, or, you, or the person is sitting here thinking about what's going to happen to them later today or later this week. Whenever, whenever, you, whenever you are feeling <coughs> afraid about anything or upset about anything, stop and go, let me, let me separate the facts from my story. You know, if, even if they were going to evict me out of my apartment right this moment, that's, that's still a story. Because in this moment, right now, I'm safe sitting in this room with you. That's 
where your peace is located. It's located in now. And then the Chorus says, if you can let yourself have peace in this moment, then that peace can be extended to the next moment and the next moment. But the minute you get out of the now, the minute you start running your story down, then that's when you lose your peace. Let's say you want a relationship and someone shows up in your life right now. And you've never been with this person before. You've never met this person before. And they're being like really friendly and loving and open. But you find yourself feeling so much fear. You are now thinking about the past. You are thinking about what happened in some other relationship. And now you're projecting it on this person in front of you who you've actually never had a relationship with. So you're not really having a relationship with the person that's in front of you. You have a, a, a relationship with the person that's not there, mm -hmm. which is the one from the past. Wow. Then you see this new person in terms of the past person, which means you're going to focus on everything that frightens you and reminds you of the past. And then you recreate it in your mind and consciously and unconsciously sabotage the entire relationship and then go, see, it happened again. And you don't even see that you created the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Just because you were never present and realized this is not your last boyfriend. This is not your last girlfriend. You never met this person before. This is a new being. You see, so the Course of Miracles says that, that the holy instant is now. That it's, it's right now. No matter what's going on in the world right now, me wanting to be a loving person with you all is, the, is as much as I can do in this moment to bring about a change, help bring about a change on the planet. But there are thousands and thousands of groups like this that are meeting and studying. So don't let the, don't let, the, do you know that the reason why things look more insane than ever is because there's so much love and light coming into the planet? It's not because everything is more screwed up that it seems crazy than ever. It's actually because more truth, love, and light is coming in that is bringing up everything that needs to be healed. I want you to hear that. Sometimes your greatest healing in your life is happening when you, it's happening when you think you're going through the most chaos. <clears throat> that that doesn't that doesn't because you're going through chaos doesn't mean you're not healing. <laughs> I said that again. Because it seems like you're going through chaos of fear, it doesn't mean you're not healing. It could mean you finally got gotten sincere about your healing to the point that now you're really affecting your core beliefs enough that they're coming up for you to see and let go of. So actually, if I'm doing this right, or if you're doing your studying correctly, you should be going through some disorientation and confusion. Mm. You, you should be going, what the hell? What the you know, hell? Usually if there's nothing, in other words, usually if there's nothing happening, no reacting, either the person isn't hearing it or they're not really working on themselves. Mm. Because if you, everybody knows that. If you really own it, you go through some disorientation and some confusion. Megan, get your hand up early. Did you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say that um, what I really love about The Course in Miracles is that when I look out into my world, I see exactly what I value most. And when I really take that to heart, then I realize, like, and it's not about even judging myself. Mm -hmm. There might be right now where I value chaos. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But also just to realize that like every moment has opportunity for me to see it through fear or see it through love. And I'm going to get a very different experience based on what I choose. That's it. See, that's too simple. See, if I'm not ready to do that, i got to make this more complex than that. Because complexity gives me an excuse for not applying a different approach. Mm -hmm. If I got the worst problem in the world, then I can kick back and go, it's, it's just too intense. I can't do nothing about it. So don't let... Don't let your ego, if you don't believe in the devil with a pitchfork, and, I, and then I ask you, well, would you believe in 50 devils with a pitchfork? And then you go, no, I still don't believe in the devil with a pitchfork. And I said, well, what about 3,000 devils with a pitchfork? Would you believe in the devil? You go, no. Right? So that so the intensity of the chaos that you're going through doesn't make the answer any less true. Mm -hmm. Just because it, there is no the, the same approach to cancer would be the same approach to getting upset about a parking space. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for people to realize that I'm still gonna be reacting mm -hmm. according to the beliefs that I choose in that moment. Just like you were saying. If I even if I had cancer, I could choose to look at it in another way. 
If somebody stole my parking space, I could choose to look at it another way because there are no small upsets. It's all equally disturbing to our peace of mind. You either upset or you're not. <laughs> you either feeling peace right now or you're not. Deep, deep. Too simple. But this this book right here, I'm telling you, don't it's, it's, don't mess with it if you just jive and you just just go ahead and do something else that's really light, you know. But the Course in Miracles will kick your butt. <clears throat> oh yeah. Okay, because it affects real change. It's the difference between a bathtub full of dirty water and you dipping it out a cup at a time and reaching down through the water and pulling the plug and letting it all go down the drain. The Course in Miracles is pulling the plug, letting it all go down the drain. But in order to do that, you have to go under the water to hit the core stuff. And the Course in Miracles says the core belief behind all pain is I am separate from God. I am separate from love. I am not connected to my source. Since I'm not connected to my source and my perception, I have fear. Since I have fear, I project it out in my world and I see fear and chaos all around me. What I'm looking at is a projection of my own belief system. And for people who don't share that belief system, they are looking at a different world. You know, I, I don't have anybody in my world that's attacking me, but I used to. So I don't want to hear you couldn't have a peaceful world because of your race, because of your upbringing, because of your background, because anything, because... You can, because I had the course put it, the only thing that the truth is interested in is that you can think. And if you can think, you can be given another set of thoughts to use. And if you use this other set of thoughts, you're going to get a different result. So, so you've already been saved. Isn't that the truth? You, you've already been given the solution to your personal peace. You already have. That's why the course says, let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let me recognize the problem has been solved. See, so what I, I mean, what do you mean my problem has been solved? I still see my, my financial problem. No, it's the problem has been solved. There are lots of laws of abundance that you could learn that would alleviate your perception of lack. So your problem has already been solved. <laughs> That's deep. Think about it. If there's a solution to it, that means it's already been solved. So therefore, all I need to do is avail myself to the solution. But the course takes it a step further. What you really should be doing is getting to the point that you get out of the way enough to let the Holy Spirit heal the situation for you. But that, that, that's a love beyond your comprehension right now that, that actually, you know, like if you're a little baby and you poop, uh, somebody changes your diaper for you. The baby doesn't have to go, oh my God, I got to change my diaper, right? Somebody reaches down, lifts the kid up and cleans the butt. Somebody needs to clean yours. <laughs> you, you, you're just like the baby. The yes. Course of Miracles said, you all are, we're just like babies that don't have, have the slightest idea of how to really take care of ourselves. We're pooping all over ourselves. <laughs> and, and, and then we're blaming everybody else and saying, mm, mm, and you don't realize it's your own poop, you know. Mm, mm, mm. And so it's saying you could be changed. Get it? You could be changed. Yeah, you could be, look at it like, that's why the Course says, look at it like you are a child of God. He said, that's our problem. We think, we don't, we don't realize we're children, but we're children with unlimited levels of creative power. The ability to create our reality through our beliefs and our choices. We are God children. That means we are creators. And you're experiencing the result of your own creative power that you've never been taught that you have. But that doesn't mean that you're not creating your reality just because you don't believe you are. It's not like the thoughts that you think start to create your reality today because you wanted to accept this belief, your thoughts have always been creating your perception of reality. So your, your whole life. Now you're going into conscious awareness, so now you don't have to be a victim of anything anymore. And forgive yourself for all the errors that you made when you were unaware of who you were. That's why forgiveness is so important. Forgive yourself for the dumb stuff you did when you didn't know any better. You did the best you could from wherever you were at the time. Forgive yourself so that you can be free. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know why? Because now you want to do better. See, that's all that anybody could ask of you. To not, now you want to do better. That's why you're studying. That's why you came here today. That's as much as you can do. You can't change one single thing you've ever done before today. So how would the Course say you would deal with your past then? 
so that you don't have to keep retracing it over and over again? Good question, right? Here you go. Another simple answer. Are you ready? Yes. Tell yourself, even if it wasn't pleasant, <laughs> even if you don't like it, tell yourself, everything that happened to me in my past was for my own best interest in the evolution of my soul. If, if you see your past as something that's helped you become who you are now, your past mm -hmm. is no longer in conflict and opposition to your now moment, mm -hmm. and your past will not have to be a problem for you. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. <laughs> Even though you could say, well, I went through this hellish situation when I was a kid. I get that. Nobody said it was a bed of roses. Mm -hmm. All right? What it did say was everything that you went through was for your own best interest because it is allowing you to evolve as a soul and a human being. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to keep condemning my dad for his issues, my mom for hers, what I went through, because my father gave me everything I needed to learn, mm -hmm. even if he was doing things that my I didn't like. Mm -hmm. That, that's, that, that's how you stop fighting it. Then you get into your power now. I'm telling you, don't want no simple little answers there. That this might be a little problem. Did <laughs> anybody online have a, any thoughts, CJ? So there, the biggest comment being that uh, we can think so we can change our situation mm -hmm. to create a solution uh, so we are here and can save ourselves, and that's why we... Okay, okay. Uh, here's an easy way. The easy way is... The easy way, the easy way is make a commitment to your spiritual curriculum right now. That would be the easy way. And make sure it's a spiritual curriculum that inspires you. And just like what Chris was saying a minute ago, here's another big biggie. Just because you believe something doesn't make it true. So just because you were taught you were sinful or taught you were guilty or taught you were a victim or taught you were alone, that doesn't make it true. Just because you're in a world that seems to be opposite and different from what you would like it to be does not mean that if you were to change your way of looking at things right now, you would start to experience a completely different reality. So what have we ended up on today? You don't have to punish yourself because you made mistakes. Your mistakes are for correction. You are not guilty. You're not sinful. You're not bad. Anyone that told you that your, your creator punishes you and hates you, that's not true. So you have to go, I'm ready for a new belief system. I'm ready to look at it another way. And I know I have blocks to that, so I'm going to do this curriculum so I can lose those blocks so that I can really find and let spirit come through and heal everything in my life. It's making me less than joyful. And in doing that, that's how I'm a part of the healing of the world. And that's what you all deserve. And have some fun. Yeah. Laugh. Play. Mm -hmm. the, the Course in Miracles says, if, 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 if a person is going to listen to what spirit is saying through you, then you have to be an example. You have to exemplify what it's talking about. So if you're the saddest person in town, you're not the person that's going to be a big witness for <laughs> the, the, what the light of God can do for people. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and if you're not right now and you're desperate in some situation, this is what you do. You go, ah, I'm ready to let go of the idea that I need to be punished through this situation. I'm ready to allow myself to recognize my innocence right now. I'm open to any mistake that I've made in my perception. I'm willing for it to be corrected. I deserve correction and not punishment. I have to tell, and, and when you tell yourself something like that, that's the truth. And the universe rushes to your system because now you're finally moving in the direction of love. Mm -hmm. To acknowledge yourself, please, for coming to the Oh, remember, side with the people that side with your innocence. <laughs> side with the, make time for the people who see you correctly. Really. And if you're going to form a relationship, please form relationships with people who also help you see yourself in a loving way. You know, because you're, the people you have special relationships with, that's your primary reflection. That's the person that's giving you the most feedback all the time is the person you spend the most time with. And that includes if you just spend a lot of time alone with you. What are you telling you when you buy yourself? Huh? You know, wow, that's deep, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So uh, let's do the financial expression of appreciation. I really thank you for sharing. It's such a blessing. 
I'm so glad to, to be here and able to fulfill this function. Uh, if those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, just go to earlpurdy.com. I'm a full-time teacher of the course. I'm telling you, I'm an extreme teaching example. If I can do this all the time and watch the Holy Spirit provide, provided if I change my mind, then you could do the same thing. Remember, to be inspired is to be in spirit. What are the things you're doing in your life that inspire you? That's your guidance. If you don't feel inspired and you're doing a shoulda, gotta, oughta, that's not really coming from your spiritual self. That's not coming from your divine self. That's coming from fear and this just a security center. So if your life is not fulfilling to you, it just means, oh, oh okay, I just need to, I need to ask for inspiration right now. What is it with, that inspires me? What turns me off? If money wasn't an issue, what would I be doing today? If money was not an issue, how would I be spending my day? What would I be doing? That's how you kind of get in touch with the things that really move you. And then people go, well, I'd just be sitting in the park chilling. Uh, you only be doing that for a short, very short period of time. Everybody always said that, but you'd last about two weeks with that one, and you'd be ready to do something. Your inner urge would start to move you to go in some direction. So um, the universe will rush to your assistance when you want to have fun and enjoy yourself. I've done, we're doing a, uh, there's going to be a relationship workshop that uh, CJ and I are doing on May 12th. Uh, we have some flyers, and, and, and please take, take one and really read for exactly what we think we're going to do, because... It's not your typical relationship workshop, and it's not just talking about romantic relationships. It's very important to understand that when we say relationships, we're talking about your relationship with everything. Yeah. And it includes the romantic relationship, but it is not a day about how to get your soul made. Okay, it's much deeper. It's much more satisfying and much more powerful than that. So, um, again, we ask for another way. We ask for a way to, to change our patterns. This is a way that spirit might be doing it for you that would really work. But I'm excited about it. It's unlike anything I've seen. Those of you online, just go to my website, earlpurdy.com. You can register. You can sign up for it. And you can find out more information about it. And I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions where I can go deep into your particular issues and we can get past those blocks. You don't have an original problem. You don't have an original problem. You don't have an original problem. So, um, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, The Way of Mastery on Facebook Live. And on Thursdays, I do what I call Hardcore Course in Miracles, um, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And of course, 1 o'clock here on Sundays. If you want to watch it and you're not a Facebook member, you don't have to be to watch the live broadcast. Just go to www.facebook.com forward slash Earl Purdy Live. So you can watch it. And I got literally hundreds and hundreds of free videos that you can watch and audios that you can download on my website. So what am I saying? Lots of support out there to change your mind and change your perception if you want to take advantage of it. Tons of it, and I'm glad of it. And I want to join with other people that want to do the same thing. Yes. I, I want to. I think we can still party and have some sense. Yes. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. You know? <laughs> you know, I used to separate. Oh, there's my party fun people, and then there's the spiritual people. <laughs> and I thought those were like two different things. They're not. That's the most fun I ever have, and freedom I ever have with anybody of those who are trying to love themselves more yeah. and want to see their innocence. Now, those are the ones you want to be with. And they're available. You know they're available. Why? Because you're here. So you can't say there aren't other people that don't want to move in the direction that you want to move in. I know you may not be too interested if they don't like the special one. But, uh, you know, sometimes we don't reach out to people because they don't fit whatever need that we think we have. The Course says when you single somebody out, it's because you think that's somebody who can meet some particular need that you have. And that's why one person is preferable over another one. Because this is the one I think is going to meet my need more than that one. But if you really need the truth, anybody can be used for that. If you want to wake up and have love, anybody could be used for that. So spirit will, as a matter of fact, spirit knows the perfect friends and the perfect relationships for you to have. And the Course says they will be sent to you if you say I'm ready to learn and you're sincere about it. Notice it didn't say 
I wanted a relationship so I won't be alone on Saturday night. It said, I want a relationship because I wanted to wake up to who I really am to get past my blocks to love. I'm ready to learn how to let go of all my fear and to practice the truth. Oh, we'll send you a relationship for that because that's going to help everybody. <laughs> but the, the course says the universe can care less about a personal interest that has nothing to do with the good of the whole. And that, that makes sense to me. You know, it, the, you, God doesn't care if I'm successful at running a business. It's what, what is my purpose for the business. That's what's important. What do I want to use it for? I want a relationship. Then the course says, well, ask yourself, what for? What do you want to come out of that relationship? I want more money. Why? What do, you, is, do you want more money just so you can boost your ego? Or would you like to have more money so that you can be a part of the healing of the planet and everyone around you? The universe is interested in all our good. It is not concerned with our personal ego and grandizement. And we're totally innocent if we want to do that. Because love doesn't condemn us even when we're doing dumb stuff. <clears throat> That's what I love about this stuff. It's like, oh man, you love. You know, you love no matter what you want, how you want to spend all day long. I'm not going to attack you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to send you to hell. But you're just delaying yourself. What? Well, you're just delaying yourself. It's like you're on the way to California and you pull off to the side of the road. <laughs> That's not a sin. You can stay in the little parking area for the next six months. But you won't be no closer to California. But you're not doing anything wrong either. You got it? So you can go into detours of hellacious relationships, and we can go into detours of lack, and we can go into detours of depression. But if that's all. You just, I just pull off to the waiting area. And you know why? The, the, the door says the mind doesn't like to delay. Like, people don't like to delay. You know how you get all upset in traffic if it's a delay? So if you were to say... Me not loving myself and thinking that I deserve punishment is delaying my happiness. You'll be much more likely to do something about it because the mind has already been programmed not to like delay. Saying that it's bad or sinful, that doesn't change anything because, oh, that's not the first time you've heard that. So that's no big deal. But to go, you know what, I'm delaying myself by constantly getting in relationships with people who attack my belief system and think I'm crazy because I want to be more loving. Oh, I'm delaying myself by being with somebody that's constantly telling me how I need to be different in order for them to be happy. See, that's a delay. Then the man goes, ooh, you don't want to do that. So it starts making new choices automatically. You want automatic healing. That's what we're going for right now. So anybody have one takeaway that they'd like to share today? One thing I heard today that's a takeaway for me is, anybody? It's human. -y. Somebody, act like I said, something that you heard. It's just, it's just it's human for a minute. Two plus two is not seven. Two plus two. Well, and, and, and what was the point of that? The point of me saying two plus two is not seven. What, who remembers what my point was? Well, they could beat the hell out of you and you still believe that. That's right. right. That, that, that punishment is not correction of an error. Right. Okay. Anybody else? I got one. Okay, great. Um, when you were talking about <coughs> how do we overcome our past yeah. and the feelings that we have from that, um, by looking at it as something that ultimately was for our own good, that made us to where we are and brought our soul to where it's needed to evolve. That's right. Yeah, that hit me. Yeah, I know it did. Because yeah, yeah, right <laughs> I'm with you. I know what you mean. Thank you, Rachel. It's so, it's so good to see you here, Rachel. Oh, I just can't tell you. Oh, God. Oh, we're coming my past. That, <laughs> that's right. All of us should say, kiss my past. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's right. Speaking of prison. <laughs> Anybody else? The problem with sin is that it's irreversible. Yeah, the problem the with sin. The beauty of a mistake is that it can be corrected. That's right. The beauty of a mistake is that it, it can be corrected. And again, think about it. Does the mind like to make mistakes? No. 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 You call something a mistake, your mind is going to automatically try to correct it because you program yourself that way for decades. So that's, a mistake is not attractive. Guilt and sin is. You know, if I'm bad and I can't do anything about that, then because that's just the way I am, then that's no impetus for me to do anything any different. You see what I'm saying? But if I go, man, it's a mistake, your mind go, ooh, it's a mistake to think I deserve lack. It's a mistake to think that I need to be alone. It's a mistake to think I can't have support and joy in my life. Just the way you phrase it can make all the difference in the world because the mind has already been programmed. I don't want to make mistakes, and abusing myself is a mistake, so the mind will stop moving in the direction of self-abuse. 
Peter. Everything that has happened to me and is happening to me is for my own best interest. Everything is for my own best interest. And then here's another good one from the course. He says, then say, I do not perceive my own best interest. Mm -hmm. Everything is for my own best interest. But I don't really, see, I don't know. What, I thought I wanted to go out with you. You didn't want to go out with me. I don't perceive my own best interest. That might have been the best thing in the world that you turned me down. I don't, just, not, just because I want to go out with you doesn't mean you're necessarily the best person in the world for me to spend time with. Rejection is protection Amen. and redirection. Rejection is protection. Rejection is protection. I call it the kingdom condom. Okay. You know, it's rejection. Someone rejects you, you've been protected. You have been protected. They didn't see you. They weren't the right person for you. So you were protected. But your ego said, oh, man, this is another example of just how pitiful you are. And it's like, no, I was rejected. I was protected because someone who really recognizes me and see my value, they wouldn't be rejecting me. That's so cool. I particularly was struck by this statement that the belief in sin is necessarily based on a firm conviction mm -hmm. that minds, not body, can attack. Mm -hmm. And particularly being raised in a very traditional belief system, it's our thoughts we're punished for. Right? If a man thinketh it, so hath he done. Mm -hmm. You know, so whatever I've been sitting over here thinking, I've already done. What, right? Yeah. And so whether that be a loving act or an attacking act. Yeah. The power we give to the mind, which is where we place sin, so that, and then when we think of ourselves as the mind, then we see that sinful being being our essence. And and to add to what you were saying, it's like I remember when I heard that as a kid, they said, "Wait a minute, you mean for me to think it is as bad as doing it? Well, I just want to go do it." That's what that's what my that's what my mind worked. Oh, you mean just to thinking about doing this and actually doing this is the same thing? <laughs> I'm going to let myself have that experience if I'm going to get the same amount of punishment either way yeah. <laughs> yeah, just wear, just wear, go and do it so I can even say my ego took that you know you know. Y all, can y'all feel me yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the part I really loved about uh, what you said is that I am not doing this alone this is a, a spiritual teaching and so I think even when we talk about everything that's happened is within my own best interest, it reminds me of what you taught a few months ago, which is I will have the day that God would give me. And that doesn't just start when I decide to have the day that God would give me. That means I've already been having all the days that God would give me. And so how do I turn that into something that's, that's useful and gives you know, my life joy and meaning? Or how do I perceive that and act out of love in that? That's how. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep, I, I know I'm pushing this, but it's not the only path. You can do another path besides the course. Don't get me wrong. But stop being your own teacher. The course, there's a line. I was reading the course, reading the course, and it got to a point that it said, resign now as your own teacher. And I went, whoa, it was like somebody smacked me because I realized that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been trying to teach myself how to be unconditionally loving when I didn't even know I was the one that needed the unconditional love. So I obviously wasn't the one to teach me. Right, and I realized I was trying to teach myself what I really didn't know how to do. He says, resign now as your own teacher. He says, which is what you will surely do if you, if you do an honest appraisal of the result of what you've been trying to do on your own. He said, you'd be glad to resign. God is real. The creator is real. Love is real. We're not alone. We have help. We, the Course in Miracles is about getting rid of the blocks to you being able to hear your guidance and your inner teacher and your inner voice. That's what it's about. I love y'all. Thanks so much for coming. Y'all awesome. Good love. Welcome. Because I know this was an intense section to go through. Yes. I have an announcement. Mm-hmm. You want me to wait until you're done? Yeah, this, this will be paused. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, mighty companions online. So, gentlemen, uh -oh. since... Uh,